Today we are in the offices of John Duran. Is that like in Duran Duran? Is that correct? Yes. Very is. good. Who is a city council person here in the city of West Hollywood, which has got to be the most progressive city in the entire country. Is it? <laughs> well, one of them. We sort of put ourselves in the same category as Berkeley, Santa Monica. There's other pockets of liberalism around the country. There's a few, but yeah. it's real. But I think West Hollywood really, really stands out. I've read of so many things that uh, this city has done. It's really okay. impressive. Thank you. Anyway, um, we're here to talk about medicinal marijuana and and, and here in, in in Hollywood. But you're no stranger to uh, medicinal marijuana. Yes, when uh, Proposition 215 passed, uh, I wasn't yet on the city council. I, I have a law practice as well, and I, I represented the. Uh, parties who were the Los Angeles Cannabis Resource Center who decided to open up a, a center of facility to operate uh, under the guidelines of Proposition 215 and they chose the city of West Hollywood so I was their legal counsel. Oh, okay. The city of West Hollywood was very supportive of the efforts of the Los Angeles Cannabis Resource Center and we assisted in the purchase of the building in which they operated out of cultivated their marijuana and dispersed their marijuana to their members. Mm -hmm. uh, Wells Fargo, I think it was Wells Fargo Bank had the first deed of trust and the city of West Hollywood held the second deed of trust. So we were very much partnered with the yeah. organizers. That was, and, and what happened? I know they did some forfeiture. Did the city lose its buildings? Yes, uh, unfortunately, when the federal government raided the center about two weeks after September the 11th, 2001. And you would have thought the federal government had like a few more other priorities other than sick patients with AIDS and yeah. cancer and glaucoma. But they raided the club a couple of weeks after September 11th, seized everything inside and then went further under the federal drug forfeiture laws and seized the, bu the building, not only from the city, but also from the bank. As far as we know, this is the first time in the United States history where the federal government has seized an asset from a municipality, from a local government. And we were operating within our own laws, within the laws of the state of California, yeah. so, so much for local control. You know, conservatives yeah. talk a lot about local control and leaving it to local government. Here we had a great program that was working out just fine. And the federal government came in and, and caused a great deal of harm, yeah. in my opinion. I, I bet. Yeah, the, the, the stringent guidelines that were put into place with the center, I mean, the center worked with the city of West Hollywood, with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, the district attorney of Los Angeles County, and developed a very conservative, very conservative program that ensured that we were pretty sure with about 99.99% compliance that only qualified patients were getting the marijuana. Since the federal government raid, this is Murphy's Law of Unintended Consequences, uh, since the federal government raid, we have had seven new clubs open in the city of West Hollywood, which are unregulated, have no cooperation with the city or the county sheriffs or the county district attorney. And so it's my belief that many of these facilities are probably distributing marijuana to unqualified persons not covered by Proposition 215. Well, now, the city of West Hollywood did enact an ordinance to regulate and control the, the clubs, didn't it? Yes, somewhat. What we, what we did is we regulated sort of the time, place, and manner restrictions like we would any other high-impact business. We did not regulate uh, a lot of the real sort of meat and potatoes issues around medicinal marijuana because of the current conflict between state and federal law. Right. You know, what we're doing here in California is just fine under our state law, under our own local laws here in West Hollywood, but the federal government believes that we're contravening their federal laws. So we were hesitant because we thought if we began to regulate in the distribution and cultivation of marijuana, we've already had the feds come down on us once, yes. we might be inviting them to return mm -hmm. and to try to take further legal action against the city. We've had to in the past really separate ourselves from the federal government. For example, we don't take any federal funding for HIV and AIDS education because we want real clear and explicit safer sex education to occur. Federal government, their money came with a lot of strings attached where there were only certain things we could emphasize like abstinence, you know, which is just not practical in a city with a large gay community. It's not so, practical anywhere. Well, anywhere, country, really. anywhere, but especially here. Yeah. yeah. So the, the medical marijuana dispensaries are kind of part of that fabric of diversity. Right, <laughs> right along with banning, you know, hot handguns and shotguns and banning the declawing of cats. Right. Yeah, medical marijuana fits in there too. Now, why did the city 
choose the number seven? How did they come up with the seven dispensaries to manage? To, to oh, we didn't. What actually happened is those just happened all on their own. Oh. People were creating and opening businesses, and we were afraid that there was a flood of more to come. Uh, so we imposed a moratorium to stop any more from right. opening up. And but that the, moratorium still exists. But the city is committed to having access, the patients to have access to this medicine. Yeah, it sort of became a choice between the lesser of two evils, you know. We know that there are unqualified persons receiving marijuana in the operation of these clubs. But if we were to shut them down, effectively we'd be pushing AIDS patients and grandmothers with glaucoma back into the back alleys looking for drug dealers to mm -hmm. buy their pot from. So that was a greater evil than allowing them to operate, knowing that there'd be a percentage of people who were receiving marijuana that were not qualified. Has, how have those dispensaries, have they cooperated with the city? Do you have yeah. things going okay with them? Yes, for the most part, because I think they know that they enjoy some protections here. You know, we, we don't have our sheriffs targeting them for enforcement. We're outside of the borders of the Los Angeles Police Department, where I think it's harder to do this sort of work. And so I think they know they enjoy some protected status here, but that protection comes with a price because we've had to really, you know, work with them on issues around security primarily. Right. Anytime you have large amounts of marijuana and cash sitting in a location, you're an inviting target for criminal activity. Right. So their instinct is to protect themselves with guns. We don't want the wild, wild west playing <laughs> itself out in the middle of an urban area. So yeah. we've had to tell them, you know what, let them take the pot, let them take the, the money. You know, we'll get it back, but let's not create more problems on top of what we're already having. Um, so, so how does how do you see the future of um, of the, the medical marijuana going in, in West Hollywood? It's going to continue. I, I think it'll continue in West Hollywood, and I think throughout a lot of uh, California, it, it will continue to happen. I think what has to happen is at some point we we have to elect a Democratic president. Who, who's not afraid to take a righteous position on this issue. We know that medicinal marijuana has therapeutic benefits. We know that it stimulates appetite, that it helps people keep their meds down, that it keeps them from getting nauseous over their chemotherapy. So we know that it's effective. And all it would take is for a president to move marijuana from a Schedule One drug over to a Schedule II drug to make it something that we could regulate under mm -hmm. federal and state law. So, you know, at some point, you know, the illogic of it all, it will crumble, it yeah. will break away, yeah. and then it'll be different. And, and, and it's people, group, cities like West Hollywood showing the other way that you can do this and, yeah. and, and benefit people and not really have much in the way of problems. Right. You know, have you seen the, I'm sure you've seen the Los Angeles County Ordinance uh, on medical marijuana dispensaries, and their ordinance allows on-site consumption. The West Hollywood doesn't. What's the feeling on that? I think it's because of the nature of the city of West Hollywood. I mean, we we have challenges around our nightclubs and our restaurants and our bars, you know. It, it is part of our, the economic mainstay of our city. I mean, yeah. many people consider West Hollywood to be an adult playground. Whether you're gay or straight, it's an adult playground. Yeah. And, and just, you know, the notion of having people consume on the premises and then having to possibly drive home, that just creates other problems of driving under the influence, for example. You know, I think what we need to work on is to make sure that it's safe for people to actually consume in their own homes at least in terms of our, our residents here. I want to thank you for joining oh, us today on the show. And, thank you. Uh, thank you for, and West Hollywood is a great place. For those of you who haven't visited West Hollywood, you should come on down here and check out this city. It's marvelous.